examples and specifically looking at the use of mass timber sh oh um sorry about that let me just grab this real quick here Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean. If we're using mass timber in a building, generally we're wanting to expose that timber to the interior to the maximum extent possible. However, there may be specific instances when we need to cover that timber up or encapsulate it due to fire resistance rating requirements or other construction code needs. Now, this video is going to be part one of a two part series. In each of these two videos, we're going to take a look at three distinct areas, either building code driven or constructability driven or practical use driven as to why we might be encapsulating mass timber elements. All right, so let's jump right into the first one. And this is really the biggest one. And that is when the code dictates requirement of timber encapsulation due to a specific construction type. When we're looking at the construction types which allow the use of mass timber in the International Building Code, we're generally looking at construction types three, four, and five. And in the versions of the code previous to the 2021 edition, there were very few instances in which the code actually dictated that you had to have non-combustible protection of mass timber elements. By and large, if you're using mass timber in a type three, type four HT, or a type five building, there are few provisions or few requirements that you use timber encapsulation. Now that does certainly change as you start looking to the 2021 version of the code, specifically for the tall mass timber construction types, types 4A and 4B. Specifically type 4A construction requires timber encapsulation 100% throughout the building. So there can be no exposed timber elements, beams, columns, slabs, etc. on top of floor assemblies, on bottom of floor assemblies, exterior walls, all of those things. All the timber has to be encapsulated in type 4A. In type 4B, most of the timber does does need to be encapsulated. There are specific provisions allowing certain percentages of a floor area or dwelling unit area uh, as a square footage percentage that the ceiling can be exposed or walls can be exposed or some of each, but there are limited allowances for exposed timber in type 4B. And then type 4C, you can expose all of the timber throughout the structure, very similar in the way that you do so with type 4HT, as well as with types three and five. Art right, there we're going to take a look at today is shaft walls and specifically looking at the use of mass timber. Oh, um, sorry about that. Let me just grab this real quick here. Uh, hello, this is Ricky. Hey, Ralph, what's up? Oh, you're there now? Oh, you've got some nice shots, huh? Do you mind if I, I'm actually doing a video right now. Do you mind if we, uh, if we shared them, let people kind of see what the status of the project is? Awesome. All right. Yeah, I'll put them up right now. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. So uh, mass timber construction under progress right now in Cleveland. This is going to be a nine-story project called Intro. It's eight stories of mass timber over a single story above grade podium. And we have some shots here from Seagate Mass Timber. So you can see really exciting project under the works uh, now. All right, so back to what we were talking about, shaft walls. For using mass timber in shaft walls, the code does allow this. It does allow this in all of those construction types we talked about previously, with one exception, if we are using a type 4A building that exceeds 12 stories or 180 feet, we can no longer use mass timber shaft walls. In that instance, we have to use non-combustible shaft walls. However, in all other instances, so again, in types three, 4HT, 4C, 4B, and type five construction, we can use mass timber as a shaft wall element. Now, when does that timber need to be encapsulated from a prescriptive perspective? Well, specifically, if we're using it in type 4C or for type 4B construction, we do need to encapsulate both faces of that mass timber shaft wall. That's just a prescriptive code requirement. That prescriptive code requirement does not exist if we're using mass timber shaft walls in type 3, 4HT, or 5 construction. However, we still may be using encapsulation on one or both faces, whether it's to achieve fire resistance ratings or to help with acoustics, which really leads well into our next topic, and that is acoustics. This is not a prescriptive code requirement. It is more just a practical we need to encapsulate the timber generally on one or both faces of an element when we're needing to meet specific requirements for acoustics performance of that assembly. So let's talk first about mass timber floor assemblies. We're using mass timber as a floor element. Generally, people want to have that exposed on the ceiling side as the finish 
on the ceiling surface. So what that means is that we are generally providing layers on top of that mass timber floor panel because in and of itself, the mass timber panel is, is usually not adequate for acoustics performance, meaning limiting the amount of noise that can travel from the space above that assembly to the space below the assembly. So we are generally adding layers to the top side of mass timber floor panels. Now these layers are not necessarily required to be encapsulation or non-combustible materials with two exceptions. And these do go back to types 4A and 4B. Those construction types do prescriptively require that the top surface of a mass timber floor panel be covered with a minimum one inch thickness of non-combustible layer. This could be in the form of a poured concrete layer or gypsum-based topping, or could even be board products. Uh, generally, that is going to be there anyway to help with acoustics, and there's also generally an acoustic mat that separates that topping from the mass timber floor panel. Same thing when we're looking at using mass timber as a wall element to provide good acoustics separation between two adjacent rooms with a mass timber wall between them. Generally, we are going to be adding elements to one or both sides of that, furring out that wall with maybe wood studs or steel studs covered with gypsum wallboard filled with cavity insulation. And that, of course, does provide a great area to run things like electrical wires and outlets. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, this is part one of a two-part series. Tune in next week. We'll look at three more areas where we might need to encapsulate our timber elements. Specifically, those are to achieve a specific fire resistance rating when we're using mass timber in exterior walls and when we have concealed spaces and how do we protect the timber in those concealed spaces, such as a drop ceiling or a raised access floor. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, we'll see you all here next week. Oh,